Okay. Uh, in this game, you are playing Slark. I think this is a fabulous game for you to send me. Uh, it was an exciting game to watch, and I feel like there was quite a bit of stuff to talk about. Um, primarily because of the way that you were playing. Um, there was a lot of good that you did, there was some bad that you did, and frankly the game just had enough back and forth to where we can talk about um, certain things. So in this game, we'll go ahead and look at the draft. Um, I, we talked a little bit in Discord about <clears throat> Slark as a hero in general. I'm not a fan of this hero. I think it's pretty bad. Um, this is Ancient Bracket. So... As I mentioned before, Slark is... Oh, he's actually doing a little bit better. Interesting. Um, he's not really doing all that great. He's not getting picked. He's not... Uh, he's not the worst hero, but... You know, if you're gonna... If you're gonna try to gain rank, then you want to make sure you're picking a hero that is... Um, winning game. So here we have like an S-tier carry, which is Spectre, versus kind of like a C-tier carry of, of Slark. Even though Slark has a pretty decent... Matchup versus Spectre. In a lot of aspects... Um, you're always going to be a little bit disadvantaged um, when your hero just isn't naturally as strong and isn't getting picked as much, so people aren't as accustomed to playing with it. Um, that being said, you picked Slark second phase, as most carries generally do, um, and you would have seen the Axe and the Warlock. So immediately with seeing the Axe, um, that doesn't rule out the... Slark pick, but it does complicate the lane a little bit. So, you know that you have a CM as your support, um, and that your other hero is a lion, and neither of them offer any save from Axe. So if this lion is a tusk, and every time that Axe calls you, the tusk blinks and snowballs, which is <clears throat> what would happen generally in um, some of the games. My tusk grenade is not very good, don't look at that. <laughs> um... Which is what would happen in like a higher MMR game. You can't always rely on your teammates to do that. Uh, and certainly not having a Tusk or a hero that can save you from Axe is an issue. Um, and so what you need to be thinking about when you pick this Slark is... Why am I picking it? And what do I need to do in order to deal with the heroes that I see? So Slark is great versus Warlock. Um, you don't really care too much about any of his spells. And you can purge off things like... Fatal Bonds, and if he, for some ridiculous reason, were to press, was it Healing Word or something like that? Where's Warlock? Shadow Word. If you were to put Shadow Word on you, um, of course you can dispel that as well. And then Upheaval, you have Pounce, um, and you can actually dispel the slow since it uh, slows for three seconds. Yeah, three seconds after you leave the AoE. So Slark is great versus Warlock. I would say in some ways Slark is okay versus Axe. You get a lot of Essence Shift stacks from him, um, but he does threaten you in the lane and he threatens you during your ulti as well, which is uh, a reason <coughs> a reason not to pick Slark in this game is because you can't BKB ulti and lock down on someone uh, because Axe can just blink call you uh, through, through BKB ulti, which is kind of annoying. So Anyway, you do pick Slark, and it ends up being pretty decent in this game, and you play pretty well, but I don't feel like your itemization ended up dealing with some of the problems that you faced, and we'll talk about that as we get into the game. Uh, in terms of build for level 1, this is pretty standard. There's not really a big issue with it. Your Crystal Maiden also has a salve, so if I um, were in this lane and I'm looking, I might be a little bit more greedy with items that are allowing me to last it. Generally, axes get battle hunger, and being able to get a CS is going to sustain you more, or how would I say this? Being able to reliably get a last hit is going to sustain you um, well versus him just as much as like a salve would. So if you're not taking the burn damage, then you might not need the salve. So another thing that you can do is get a ring of regen. I'm not sure the Spectre didn't get one. So ring of regen is pretty standard on most um, carries these days, they pick it up instead of their self and like one branch or something, and it just gives them a little bit of sustain in the lane, helps their high regen, and Slark has naturally high regen already, and so bumping that up from a four to a five and a half or something, and then when you're under tower, you have like six HP regen, you're almost tangoed permanently. Um, so that's something that you should maybe experiment with is uh, ditching the salve and getting a ring of regen. Anti-mages do it, most specters do it. Um, I think a lot of Sven's do it as well. 
most most carries in, in my games end up doing that. Not all, but a lot. Okay, uh, for the rune fight, um, you're able to juke the arrow. That's good. They bring three heroes here, and your CM sneaks around. And the only thing I want to talk about this is, if there was any communication between you and your team, you might not want to make this play. Or at least be very, very cautious with the way that you make it. Because you know that your CM's not there to support you. You know that there is a non-zero chance of you getting arrowed. Um, so, you go in, and you're going to get clicked quite a bit. Excuse me. And you skill pounce, and I think that's fine. If you're if you're worried about dying, um, like you shouldn't be afraid to do this. And this is why I, I don't know if we've talked about this before. This is why you don't skill things until you get to the laning phase, right? Because if you need that point in pounce to survive, um, it can be worth. And uh, another thing to think about is getting essence shifts stacks versus axe is generally difficult once you get spin. So your best chance is level one, um, but you go ahead and and you get pounce, and so you just kind of have to play around the fact that you don't have essence shift, and so trading with him is definitely going to favor him uh, right now. And then that, like, level one advantage you have on him doesn't exist in this lane. So, unfortunately, your steam is retard and doesn't get this range creep. Like, she has so many opportunities to do it, but, like, she just doesn't. Um, and that's something that... If she's not doing, you need to remind her to do that, uh, because that range creep ends up kind of cucking your XP quite a bit. And it's just really, really important to make sure that you get every single bit of XP that you can, especially in a difficult lane like this. So, one thing I do want to talk about is the amount of region that you buy in this lane. So you end up buying quite a bit of salves. Um, and I think it is good that you are buying region. And there is a certain point where your your support is kind of griefing you if they're not letting you get to level 6 on Slark. So I would very willingly sacrifice 3 or 4 last hits in order to get my ult like a minute earlier. Um, because of the way that it changes the lane dynamic, right? Like, Axe hates a Slark that walks up. Hits him a couple times, then walks in the trees in his full health a few seconds later, and then walks out and hips, hits him a couple times, and, and so on and so on. Um, so making sure that you prioritize getting that level 6 ASAP is a really, really big deal. And your support can help you a lot with this, and if they don't, then you may have to uh, do some pulls or go farm a small camp or something yourself. And just try to be creative with how can I get as much as possible without um, getting destroyed. Now, I do want to back up real quick because you end up not really getting any last hits in the first few waves here, which I think is um, a, a misplay and not just getting unlucky with CS. So we'll talk about aggro mechanics a little bit here. So watching your mouse movements, you don't really draw aggro, and he does. And that's why this little creep split thing happens. And you want to be drawing aggro as much as possible in these hard lanes, especially when there's someone just kind of clicking you. Um. So, this is not an easy lane, and like I said, your support is... Like, she gets first blood, which is kind of cute, but... Um but you're missing last hit. So here it's like, you're not pulling aggro, and what you want to be doing is just trying to split the creep wave up as much as possible. That way, Axe... So every offlaner would like to hit you, realistically. Um, some offlaners hit you better than others, and some offlaners want to, to hit you in particular situations. So Axe is kind of unique, where he can't trade with you 1v1, but he can trade with you if your creeps are hitting him. And that's kind of like a unique thing about Axe. Generally, that makes it an even worse trade. And so Axe has this kind of weird advantage uh, to where bad trades for him are more favorable than they would be for other heroes because of spin. So what you want to do is you want to take that away from him and instead have even trades. You don't want to have this situation where Axe has, you know, three or four creeps hitting him, plus you're hitting him, um, you really want him to have to choose between hitting you or having creeps hit him. And so, 
draw an aggro is the best thing that you can do in order to make that situation happen, because all of his creeps will walk towards your range creep, and then if he wants to trade with you on a range creep, that's fine, because you and a range creep statistically aren't going to make him spin a whole lot. And your CM's doing a pretty good job of, of hitting him. I wish she was pulling, uh, just because XP is such a big deal. Uh, in terms of skill build, I think you mentioned already... I'm going to tab out real quick. Uh, my first and second level I had the wrong skill build. I'm not sure if it affected me just because I was axe bar on it. So I would say the pounce was fine. Um, obviously it's not ideal, like you don't want to do that. And I think maybe chilling on that bounty rune, because it's unlikely that you get the rune, and even if you do, it, if it cucks your lane so much, um, especially the level one, then it's probably not worth. Uh, and then level two, you definitely should not have gotten dark pack, which I think you recognize, and that's fine. Like, you're allowed to make mistakes. Um, but you have to recognize them as a mistake and say, okay, this is something I could have done better in order to win the game and not harp on other people's mistakes, right? Because you can't control their mistakes, you can only control yours. So, like, this is something that changes the dynamic of the lane sufficiently to where this Axe's game is very different. So, like, there will be repercussions of this throughout the entire game uh, because of how much Axe is able to, to shut you down in this laning phase. So here you do finally start drawing aggro, which is good. Uh, we're going to fast forward a bit. Um, we talked about salves. Something you can also do is bring out tangos. They're more gold efficient, and your your uh, salves are a little bit less reliable in the lane, especially versus like an axe. You can pop it like you just did there. And then the other thing is the tangos allow you to regen and CS at the same time instead of having to kind of dance around. And something I feel like you're making a mistake of is you're letting them harass you and you're not getting the last hits. So either you need to back up and not let them harass you and get XP, or you need to get the last hits and let them harass you. So kind of dancing in the middle is a way that, uh, how do I say this? It's something that good, good players can abuse worse players for um, because they're better at like pressuring the enemy. So when I play on a Smurf account and I play offlane or something, I can sit here in the wave and I can trade with this guy and I'll just spam regen because I know that he's not going to buy as much regen or he's going to get nervous because he's getting low and he doesn't want to like go up for that CS because he's going to get autoed and he's low. It's like, so then he ends up just getting autoed and not getting the CS. Um, and obviously in an ideal world, you get the CS and you don't get autoed, but that's not always possible. And the better your opponents are, the more likely they're going to punish you for every little move you make. So every last hit you go up, they're going to hit you. Um, and so drawing aggro and forcing the situation where either they get to hit you or they get to last hit. Um, and if they're going to choose to hit you, at least you need to get the last hit anyway. And then you can buy health regen with it. Okay, skill build. Um, this lane is obviously a little bit of a disaster. And you really just want to get your level 6 as much as, as soon as possible. And then you're going to end up jungling a lot. And you get a second point in Essence Shift, which I think is a mistake. Um, generally, in Slark get lanes, you're fine with getting a second point in Essence Shift because it has a pretty good uh, return on investment. It doubles the duration. Um, but in this lane, we can go and count on like one hand the number of times you've autoed this axe. And it just doesn't do as much as an additional 75 damage on your Q for farming. So, and you kind of recognize that you're just going to be farming. So you start hitting creeps quite a bit. And this is really good, right? It's like the wave is pushed. Axe is kind of threatening you. You can juggle. Now, since you're level 6, what I would like to see instead is you pushing him out of the lane and then regenning. Like, this play is fine. This is a fine play if your life is threatened, right? Like, if if the Axe and the Mirana are both here and you can't, like, make these plays, um, then this is fine. But if you can trade with this Axe a little bit and then make this play, it's a, it's a little bit better for you, right? Um, like here, you need to be here hitting this guy. There's, there's no reason for you to be anywhere else. You're full HP, you're full mana. Um, like, there's waves and XP here that is is too important to miss. And now, because of the way that you're positioned, Axe gets to pressure the tower while you get zoned by some support. And they TP out, and you need to be sprinting towards this. So 
so and we'll watch what happens here. So it's like there again, just hit him five times. Like you have your ulti, you have pounce. If you don't want to commit, you don't have to. Like that's the beauty of Slark. And flash rack TP's in. I believe they glyph for that, which is really good play for them. Um, not. <sighs> it was a good play by them. That that's what I'm gonna say. I think if you trade hits with that Spectre a little bit, um, then it is harder for them to commit on you. But, you know, you're going to die in some games and that's just life. So, you end up jungling because you feel like there's too much pressure bottom. But my question is, why are you not doing this top? So, like, you're in the safest part of the map and you have your ulti, you have your TP. And the only heroes on the map that threaten you are Axe plus Leshrac. So, like, Spectre is not going to 1v1 you and kill you. Mirana is not going to 1v1 you and kill you. Uh, Warlock is certainly not going to 1v1 and kill you. And so, all of these heroes don't really threaten you individually, but the axe Leshrac combo does. So as long as you have any clue where they are, or if like, for example, you know that Leshrac just TP'd bottom, and his TP's still in cooldown, by the way, um, then you are free to do basically whatever you want. And so I would have TP'd top, especially since that tower's gone, so you have a lot of this farm. And then you can take some of the farm from the Spectre, who's trying to recover, keep the lane pushed, and then if they rotate there, you can do what you just did, which is go bottom. Um, now, I think in this case, it was a mistake to go bottom because Spectre doesn't want to lane versus you, right? Like, what does he have? Treads and a Wraith Band, and you have Echo Saber Treads and a Wand and Essence Shift. Speaking of which, uh, you should at least be getting the synchronous points. Uh, I don't, I don't know if you actually need to max pounce, but once you have two points in Essence Shift, you need to be at least getting synchronous points, um, on pounce. If you don't have like, if you're not laney versus like a tight hunter or something who just lets you hit him for free the entire time, um, having pounce and mobility is a really big deal. You'll find that like having three points in, in pounce, it basically doubles your survivability. Whereas this, especially when you're hitting creeps and you want to be kind of splitting the map, um, like this doesn't make any sense. This is a fighting thing and this is like a farming mobility split push thing and you want to be doing the split push and not the fighting. Um, and you're farming, but you're... Yeah, anyway. I think you get the play. Okay, you should do this right. So... Again, like I said, the scariest hero on the map is the axe less rat combo, um, because you can't get out. Generally. Another thing to consider is your item build here. So you're rushing the Silver Edge, and you obviously want to get a Silver Edge at some point in the game. It's pretty decent versus Axe, and it's obviously really, really good versus Spectre. But I have to ask the question every time I build an item is, is this the best item for me? So in this game, Spectre still doesn't have Radiance, and even if she did, she doesn't have a lot of HP. Like, Dispersion isn't the biggest deal uh, to me. So there is the Axe and the Leshrac combo, and Axe is going to blink Blade Mail call you, and Leshrac is going to kill you with all of his magic damage. And I think that in order for you to survivably fight, and Silver Edge is certainly a fighting item, um, you're going to have to have a BKB. And so it feels kind of weird to get a Silver Edge before you get a BKB, just because it doesn't really change how you fight. It's like, okay, sure, you can break the Spectre, but you aren't really concerned about him as much. And here... Okay, <laughs> I didn't even know that would happen, but I was going to talk about it. It was going too fast. This is a like a very small mistake, um, but it can get you killed quite a bit. You have a free heart. If you back up out of this fight, like out of this tower range, and you kind of do it a little bit, like right here where you're checking for vision or something. Um, like you see that your region goes, and then you're like, whoa. And you kind of back up a little bit. That's the right move. Like, you need to back up and get full HP. Um, this For the same reason that you get the strength talent over the Agi, is the same, re like, the same mentality for that is the reason that you should back up and get full health here, right? Because even if you're at 100 health, if you get your ulti off, you're pretty likely that you're going to survive. Um, and so Slark's real threat is getting bursted. And we're going to talk about getting bursted later in the game when we talk about your future items. Um, so... 
Like, here, you get bursted and you die. And you might die if you're full HP anyway, but it's way, way, way less likely. And it's certainly far more likely. We can see how much damage. Yeah. They, they did, like, basically exactly as much damage as they needed to before you died. So if you had that additional 800 HP, um, you'd have lived long enough to get ulti off and pounce and even potentially run, excuse me, run away. Now, the fight ends up going really well for you guys because... Um, you tanked quite a bit of spells, and they killed everyone else. Which is good. That's what you want to happen. And here, this is like the first time that I feel like you're kind of utilizing the fact that you're pretty survivable, and you can live in this top lane for the most part. Um, now your goal isn't to go for kills here. It's just to create some map pressure, right? Like eventually people have to rotate to this lane in order to deal with this tower. You don't actually have to hit the tower. You just want to like push the wave out to here. Ideally, you even have a ward back here. You can buy it yourself or ask a support to do it. Um, and then you can farm these camps. And when the wave pushes, you go back and maybe you rotate to your triangle and farm the ancients. And then you just kind of live like in this area, like the top lane, these two camps, plus these two camps in the triangle. And you, this is just kind of your home. Um, and when, whenever Leshrac shows or Ax shows, your home is anywhere that they're not. Okay, let's talk about this fight. So I like that you TP where you do and that you try to come to this fight late. Um, I think that's really important on Slark because you don't want to be the one tanking the spells. You want to be uh, killing heroes quickly and building up stacks in order to kill the beefier heroes later. So you are now going for this BKB, but again, I don't feel like the Spectre has been the threat on the map. I feel like it's been the Leshrac entirely, so I think if you had the BKB and now you're building the Silver Edge, it ends up being a little bit better for you. Um, and then this is a pattern I see throughout the game when I watch it the first time, which is you often like, at 30 minutes, you start to play the map really, really well. Like, for whatever reason, that, like, wakes up inside of you, and you start playing the map really, really well. Um, and you don't have a TP, which kind of defeats the purpose of what you're doing, because if they don't respond to you, um, and you need to TP to a fight, like, you can't do that. Here again, like, you know Leshrac doesn't have TP, so you're a little bit safer up here. Um, and I have in my notes talking about like tread switching and clarities and stuff, which I feel like you're doing really well this game. Anytime you get low on mana, which is not very often because you have a crystal maiden, um, and because you're tread switching, then you fly out of clarity in this game. Uh, this fight, I watched this fight twice, and we can watch it again real quick. Um, I wasn't really sure what to say. So, it's such a, like, weird scuffed fight. Like, Brewmaster just kind of runs top. And goes on a Warlock. Okay, and then... Right here, so this is your player perspective, you're looking at this, and you're seeing a Brewmaster ult that's about to die, a Lion that's TPing out, there's at least three heroes here, your Zeus is bottom, and it's like you and CM versus the world, and I guess the Brewmaster illusions. I don't know. I think at the very least, you should be pressing BKB there in order to try and, like, be a little more preemptive with your stuff. Because if you get called, like, you just die. Like you did. So, getting your BKB off is pretty important. Um, but, you know, mistakes happen, and I'm not going to harp on you too much for it. So... But just be aware of, like, what resources your team has going to these fights. Like, Brewmaster's running away, Lion's teeping out, it's like, Zeus isn't there. It's basically you and CM versus the entire enemy team. Um, that's just not going to work. Here, you learn from your mistake. Maybe BKB earlier. Um, 
sometimes it feels bad to use your BKB for things like that, but I mean, the thing that I had to realize when I would die and not press BKB is it's like, okay, what's the worst that happens? I press BKB and I live and it wasn't the most efficient BKB usage. It's like, I would rather live and say I shouldn't have used BKB than not use BKB, die and say, man, I should have used BKB to hit the city. Here, like, I like that, that you back up, you get that health. Like, even 100 health makes a big difference, and it's free, so you might as well do it. Just like tread switching. It's just kind of, uh... It's like, even if it only wins you one game out of 100, it's free to do. You just have to do it. And then here, I really, really like this. This is like... Um, when I watched this the first time, this is when I was like, okay, this guy is playing better. Like, he's not just playing in a higher bracket, he's playing better. You are hitting mid because you know you can't show up to this fight. Now, you don't have a TP, which is which is really bad. Um, but it's like there's a tier 2 here. You're hitting a tier 2 with a catapult. You're pressuring. They're going to go high ground. Their high ground without Leshrac is completely trash. Completely trash. None of them hit buildings. In fact, like, Slark is awful. He's notorious for being like a terrible high ground hero. He's notoriously bad. But you have a Siege Creep. Which makes you a great tower pusher. Siege creeps turn average towers pushers into great tower pushers. And you can pressure this tower. And it's like, if this fight goes south or whatever, you know, it's like the map threat is the same. Like, unfortunately, the gold is going to change because they're getting kills. Um, and you guys aren't. But in terms of the, the pressure on the map that's getting created, like, you're equal. This is just as much of a threat as the entire enemy team. So this is really good. Now, this lack of TP is a huge mistake. Um... And you just, if you're going to play like this, you have to have a TP. You just absolutely have to. So this is good. You farm the Ancients. You get the wave pushed out. I would probably, especially because you have this ward in the triangle there, um, keep pushing. Like you have BKB, you have ulti, you have vision of people coming. Um, probably could have pushed one more wave, but that's fine. Okay, and then itemization. We're going to talk here because this is where I think itemization starts to disappear. So, I don't feel like your issue in fights is control. Um, you have a lion, you have a CM, you have a brewmaster, and you have pounce. And they don't really have any ways of dealing with you. As far as I know, they have no. They only have a BKB on Leshrac, and Leshrac isn't your real priority in fights like you would like to kill him but he's not your 100 he's not completely your priority you really want to kill like mirana and warlock and axe and like you kind of start with the easiest hero and work your way up because the longer the fight goes and the more you're hitting people for free the stronger you are um and so this basher is okay um but i'm gonna say that's about it i feel like it's okay the the reality of this game is now that you have BKB, the only thing you're going to die to is getting like bursted full zero uh, by chain stun. Let's say you get blink called and you're hitting a blade mail axe while he's called and then you get arrowed and then you get stunned and you didn't have a chance to press BKB or ulti or anything. The only thing that's going to keep you alive in that case and allow you to continue to fight is uh hp or status resistance and so i think satanic or scotty are the best two items that you could have bought um i would probably have prioritized the satanic this game um the active is really really good in the fights it helps you man fight specter it helps you man fight the axe you didn't go the lifesteal talent uh, i think the attack speed's okay i generally go the lifesteal talent versus specter and axe myself because i feel like attack speed doesn't benefit me as much as being alive does um, like, if they let you hit them forever, the lifesteal is going to serve you more than 20 attack speed. So, I think this Basher is a little bit of a mistake. It's not the end of the world. Uh, it does give you some health, it does give you some damage, and being able to, like, I don't know, bash Warlock out of a TP or something if your pounce is on cooldown is nice. But, anyway, I think a Satanic is the item of choice uh, for me. And you waste a little bit of time, like, chasing this Mirana around. Where you could have focused other targets. Um, actually, now that I say that, I remember that you wanted to talk about target selection for this game. So, we'll talk about that really quick. So, your target selection is... You want to kill whoever you can kill the easiest. 
and the fastest who who has spells. So let's say this warlock presses ult, and then you walk into the fight. You don't care about warlock. Like you don't want to chase him. You don't want to get kited by his glimmer or whatever, right? Like you might be able to threaten him if he's out of position or something. But like this isn't your target if his ulti's on cooldown. You just don't give a you don't give a hoot about him. Um, like Axe, if Axe is blink called already, then like he's a pretty decent target because he has low cooldowns. He has high impact in fights. Like he controls you. His spells are on cooldown, which means you get to play. Like, I think it's fine to be able to go on him. Um, Spectre, obviously, you want to break Spectre at some point. So, like, if you get a decent chance to go on Spectre, that's fine. Um, basically, the, the idea that I want to, like, instill on you for Slark is go on the easiest target for you to go on. Um, so, like... But it's so dynamic because you can't just go on someone because they're weak, like a uh, warlock or something. If Axe is nearby with Blink Call, right? Like then that warlock is not an easy target to go on. Um, so you need to like say, okay, who stops me from hitting people, and either go on the person who stops you from hitting people, or wait for them to do whatever it is that they do to stop you from hitting them. In Axe's case, uh, Blink Call Blade Mail is what you're kind of afraid of this game. So. Like, wait for him to use his spell. He's going to use it eventually. You just have to be patient. So, um, you guys make a great decision to go Roche after a successful fight. There are no spells. You get a DD. And then... You kind of double down on this Basher idea with Abyssal, which I think is even more of a mistake. I think Basher was okay at best. Um, and I think Abyssal is just downright bad don't need the gap close, you don't need the sun, like, they don't have any big channeled ability that you have to deal with. Um, if they have, like, a Snapfire, or an Enigma, or, I don't know, some other hero that channels an ability that's really impactful, then Abyssal can be fine. Uh, other options for Abyssal are, like, if you're playing versus a Disruptor, Abyssal's really good, because if he doesn't have Ags, you can just Abyssal straight out of his ult, um, and it saves you your BKB if you need to there like if you had vision abyssal would have been could but so would a basher anyway so you guys had this aegis and for the most part you guys kind of run around and you get split pushed by this leshrac and i don't want to talk as much about what you should be doing because i think for the most part you guys are like trying to do uh the right thing you're just like kind of suffering because this guy just bkb tps with invis every single time um so the thing I want to draw your attention to for this is, like, this Leshrac is relieving and causing so much pressure for his team. Like, Spectre is just AFK hitting creeps for free. It's like, you guys have Aegis, you're 6k up, you have this advantage, you want to go and fight, you have all the towers, they don't. Um, and this Leshrac is causing five people to run around the map to do something. So what you can do is... Um, you guys can group up and you force something. Like, you have your tier 2s and go and threaten his high ground. And if he never TPs back and he goes to your high ground, then you guys can TP back and deal with him. But if he doesn't TP back and he just trades a tier 2 for a lane of racks, then, um, like, then you're okay with that. You'd rather lose your tier 2 and get a lane of racks. Like, that's a great trade. So I think the mistake that you guys are making is chasing him around too much. Um, you don't have the vision for it and... You guys just aren't really equipped for that. <clears throat> so I think a best like best thing to do is maybe Zeus can buy BOTs. So like you can say, hey, buy your travels, and then Zeus can defend. Oh, this is Brewmaster. I clicked on. Oops. Okay, Zeus has BOTs. Like so, Zeus should be TPing back and defending towers, and then he like he stays in the back and he defends all the towers, and then he TPs to the fight. And the four of you just go and push an objective. And it's really nice that you have the Zeus because he has the great global presence. Plus he has the bots. So he can make that play. And so he can just kill the creep wave and then TP. Um, and he can even force Leshrac to BKB TP. That way he doesn't have BKB for the fight because Zeus will just cancel it with Nimbus or something. So that's what should be happening. <coughs> so here in this situation, if your team isn't going high ground or doing the correct plays, all you can do is farm and be efficient. And so you should just try to be as efficient as possible. And I know you talked about in Discord how your farm kind of dropped off towards the end. And even though you were like, 
top net worth at 30 minutes, I think. Like, even with having a pretty crappy start, yeah, you're like top net worth um, for a little bit. Like here, you get the Aegis and your net worth drops because you're running around the map getting dragged around by this Leshrac. And like Leshrac is farming and your other teammates are farming and Spectre's farming um, and you're not. So like if your team doesn't want to do anything, then just be efficient and be safe and try to do the same thing Lesh is doing. It's like drag heroes around the map, push lanes, um, that kind of stuff. So, you guys win this fight. Um, the only thing I'll mention is you should be thinking about the same thing we talked about earlier, which is anytime you have a chance, if you're like missing a third of your HP and you have a chance to just go duck in the trees for five seconds, it's like that's a bigger deal than being in that fight for those five seconds. So, like, even though your team wins the fight, they have to push out all these lanes because they weren't getting pushed before. And then they have no tower damage because you're dead. So again, we'll talk about how, like, the thing that's threatening you in these fights is, like, Axe calling you and you not having the sustain to be able to stand there and man fight. And no amount of bashes or, like, break or whatever is going to fix that. But if you have a Satanic there and you're full HP because you just, like, press Satanic, you can keep fighting for a little longer. And you may not live. Like, you have to understand that. But you're going to live for a hell of a lot longer and you're certainly going to get BKB off. Um, and Silver Edge, and you have these opportunities to make plays because you have a Satanic instead of a, an Abyssal. So, like, that's just a comment on itemization. Um, another thing to be thinking about is the later the game goes, the more, impo more important having buyback is. So, like, if you die at 10 minutes, it's not really that big of a deal if you don't have buyback because they can't threaten your base. Uh, with Leshrac, Leshrac will obliterate your base if he ever gets there, especially with the talent that, yep, I assume he got. Um, and you have no more outer towers. So playing without buyback, playing without TP is a really, really easy way to lose a game that feels unlosable. Um, just because if you make a small mistake, well, let's say you just get arrowed randomly while you're farming this camp and you die and you don't have buyback because you bought this point booster. Um, like... <laughs> Less is just gonna obliterate your base. The other thing to consider is where are the creeps? So if you know they want to threaten high ground, you want to do what the Less Shrek was doing before, like we talked about, and go and cut waves. Like here, just back up and heal. Like this is what I want to see. So you back up and heal, and then you swing around and you get a kill. And then there, like, you're not so threatened by that guy if you have a Satanic. So. And for the life of me, I have no clue how you guys don't end the game here. Reshak is dead for 110 seconds with no buyback. So, but I guess the fight got thrown. And you buy out? Okay, you are going way too manly here. You don't have buyback. You should have worked. Good grief. Spectre so bad. You need to be trying by that. So, inevitably, you're gonna. Okay, so remember we talked about 
not going on a warlock when he doesn't have ults. Oh, not like this. Oh my gosh, that's really sad. Yeah, you guys kind of throw the game there. I want to see how Zeus died. Because that changes some things here. What the heck? How's he there? This gets gone on. Oh, he uses this himself? What? Yeah, so Zeus. Like. Zeus should be chilling for 10 seconds. He certainly should not use himself. Um, then you don't have buyback and the game's kind of over. That's really sad. I think... I think you should go back and you should look in this replay at this fight really closely top when you guys got the racks and Lesh was dead for 100 seconds and figure out why... Like, what happened. And just try to be objective. Like, look at the things that you did wrong. Look at the things that your teammates did wrong. Um, like, here, like, you and Zeus both threw. Zeus threw because he didn't want to wait five seconds for his Aeon Disc. And, like, you threw because you're playing way out of base. Like, you have all of your lanes of racks. You can stand behind your Zeus. You don't have to make any play whatsoever. Um, and just let Zeus defend. And he, let's say they take two lanes of racks, right? It's like, that's the absolute worst case scenario. They take two lanes of racks, but... There's no way that going out of base without buyback is going to be good. Like, you just basically have to get lucky. Um, and you got unlucky with the arrow, but it wouldn't have mattered because you just died. So, but if you're, like, if you're in position, Zeus doesn't get killed like that. So, it's kind of on. It's, it's a team effort, right? Like, the team wins and loses the game. You can't 100%... Uh, blame yourself and you can 100% blame your team so I would try to find a happy medium of looking at this fight here top and understanding that like you're out of base with no buy there's no there's no reason to leave your tier fours when they're pushing so like if they dive your tier fours on your Zeus like the Spectre did then you can go hit them with BKB and stuff so but they have really good team fight and you still die to Axe Blake calling you okay so that's everything for the replay that I want to talk about. Um, I think, like I mentioned at the beginning when I watched this the first time, I felt like this is a really, really good game to talk about. Um, like, some ideas and stuff. And so, a lot of the things that you did, I felt like you did really, really well. And were, like, felt like you definitely deserved to be in this bracket, which is awesome, because you ranked up, like, a ridiculous amount very quickly. Um... Is that your wife, dude? Damn. Um, so, but there are a couple things that you made some mistakes. Where when you had Aegis and your team wasn't equipped to go high ground, you lost a lot of farm and a lot of space was just kind of made by the Leshrac from everyone chasing him around. And if you're just able to farm your item, and let's say, let's say you even get the Scotty, right? If you have the Scotty plus buyback at the end of the game, the way you play is so much different. And what you can do is different on the map as well. Um, so I think I'll end this here. I hope this was beneficial.